Wild azalea is the most common native azalea in the southeast. Leaves are alternate, deciduous, and clustered. The slightly fragrant flowers, which bloom before the leaves, are mature and grow in whorl-like clusters. They are pink, trumpet-shaped, and about one inch long, flaring into five petal-like lobes. There are five stamens that extend well beyond the petals, and a pistil equal to or longer than the length of the stamen. The flowers give off a delicate fragrance and usually disappear before the leaves. It, tend to, it tends to form large colonies and hybridizes readily with other species in the genus. Hydrangea quercifolia is the oak leaf hydrangea. It is a deciduous shrub with a white flower. It is one of the few hydrangeas that is native to the United States. It blooms best in areas where summer is hot. In advantages, it can thrive in much drier locations than most hydrangeas. The leaves turn red, orange, and yellow in the fall. However, the soil cannot be too soggy or it can't grow. The native plant section in the Arboretum is meant to educate the public about uh, native plants in Alabama and the southeastern United States. And it's just a way to, again, bring plants from all across the state into one location so that you know people coming to learn about them don't have to travel all over the state to go see them. One of the unique features uh, up near the pavilion is um, the Ketona dolomite glades. They uh, actually trucked in several um, rocks and some of the substrate and soil from a unique habitat up in uh, Bibb County. And uh, in this area back uh, in, in the early 2000s, they discovered, I don't know, eight or ten new species to science in this little uh, glade area of Alabama. So that's kind of a unique section of native plants to Alabama. Uh, I don't know that the daily weather patterns affect plants uh, life history so much as as longer term uh, climat climactic patterns and they certainly do you know global changes in, in, in climate patterns do affect plants in their life history. Um, there are many examples of uh, for example, blooming times of plants are uh, coming earlier and earlier each spring with the effect of global climate change. And so that can affect the pollinators, the flowering times, the fruiting times. And uh, so certainly weather does play a factor. Day to day, I'm not so sure, but, but over the long term, it certainly does have an effect. Pitcher plant bogs host a whole separate environment and ecosystem full of plants uh, versus, you know, the rocky hillsides of Mount Chiaha. And so, again, it's going to depend on the particular plant uh, study or the plant group that you're interested in. And uh, again, but the nice thing about the Arboretum is that this is where you can begin to, uh, to, to, to study those things and uh, become interested in various plants. Some plants certainly are. Um, invasive species can be a problem and are a problem in the southeastern United States and Alabama as well. Our state spends millions of dollars on eradication uh, measures or control measures even. Some, some invasive species are, are here to stay and so they won't be eradicated completely and so it's a matter of just controlling them year to year and trying to keep them from invading new areas. But they certainly do have the ability, for example, a uh, Japanese climbing fern uh, is, is a vine that can grow up over bushes and trees and thus effectively shading out the light for the understory of vegetation. Part of the mission of the Arboretum here at Auburn University is to, to really focus on native plants. And so as you walk through the Arboretum, you'll notice that there aren't not a lot of invasives. Their, their purpose is to try to get rid of invasives, uh, but also to highlight the beautiful and rich diversity of native plants in, South, uh, in Alabama generally, and encourage homeowners to plant these beautiful plants in their yard. I think conservation really begins with education. So I would encourage everyone to, to come to the Arboretum and begin to learn about the various plant species that there are. Become uh, familiar with, with a few of your favorites and see what, there is, what, the, what you can do to, to not only plant them, encourage their growth, but you can also participate in plant clubs and plant organizations that either help to eradicate invasives or uh, you know, garden clubs that, that focus on uh, planting native plants, but I think I think the, the beginning is to become educated. You know, we, we, we fear that that we don't know, and so if we, we become familiar with 
with native plants, we, we understand their, their value, their purpose, and, and their beauty. There are over 500 species of oaks in the northern hemisphere and 42 that are native to the southeastern United States. The Donald E. Davis Arboretum is home to over 39 species of these oaks. 18 of them are white oaks with their rounded, lobed leaves and 20 red oaks with bristle-tipped ones. The most famous of these being Quercus virginiana. Quercus virginiana, commonly known as live oak, is a southern symbol of strength and a hallmark of Auburn University. They can live for hundreds of years. Named for their evergreen nature, live oaks remain alive throughout the depths of winter. However, they are not true evergreens. The live oak drops its leaves immediately before new ones emerge in the spring. The bark is dark, thick, and furrowed longitudinally. The leaves are stiff and leathery, with the tops being a shiny dark green. They are also home to many types of epiphytic plants, including Spanish moss. Home to animals like woodpeckers, wild turkeys, chipmunks, and beavers, hickory trees are important members of the walnut family. There are 18 known species, and 15 of them are native to North America, 10 of which can be found in our very own Davis Arboretum. They require rich soil and full sun for optimal growth, but can reach heights of 100 feet in optimal environments. They are monoecious with pinnate leaves and bloom during the spring. Including over 115 species, the family Pinaceae is coniferous and can grow to be 245 feet tall. Pines are long-lived, typically reaching ages of 100 to 1,000 years old. One of the world's oldest living organisms is a pine that is around 4,600 years old. The bark of most pines is thick and scaly, but some species have thin, flaky bark. The leaves are evergreen and shaped like needles. Pines reproduce with cones and seeds have wings on them that help with wind dispersal. Pinus teide, known as the lull bully pine, is extremely fast growing and gets to be over 100 feet. It is the most common lumber pine. Various non-native insects and animals have a significant impact on their environment. These organisms use plants as their food source, their habitat, and much more. Now we are going to highlight a few of these common organisms that we have identified in the arboretum. Some birds, such as the American robin, are migratory and can be found in South Alabama in the fall and until spring. Others, such as the northern cardinal, are not migratory, and they find their homes in woodland edges and brushy areas. Both feed on the abundance of insects, seeds, and fruit. Insects, such as the ladybug and spiders, have a positive impact on their environments. Ladybugs feed on the aphids, which eat and ultimately kill plants. In fact, many types of ladybugs were introduced to North America for the sole purpose of pest control, to protect plant life. Spiders feed on pest insects, which helps to keep insects from becoming too numerous and destructive to the planet. These insects would devour agricultural crops and cause a food crisis. Some spiders build intricate webs in order to catch their prey, but others deliberately seek out other insects and attack them. Caterpillars eat the leaves of trees. They may consume up to 27,000 times their body weight in leaves. Some organisms act as pests and have a negative impact on their environment. Halomorpha halis, commonly known as the brown marmoramid stink bug, is native to parts of Asia and was accidentally introduced to the United States. They get their name from their defense mechanism, which is releasing a foul odor when threatened. Stink bugs use proboscis to pierce various fruits, rendering them unfit for consumption.